Shalom. Shalom, family. This is a segment of Axe Watchmen. And for those of you don't, that don't know, we have a page set up on our site that's called Ask Watchmen, where many of you, if you have questions, you can um, ask these questions and we'll answer them. And some questions we'll answer right there on the post and some we're gonna do in the form of a video. Mm -hmm. And this is one we decided to do in the form of a video. And this is to um, Amanda Naya, Amanda Naya. Forgive us if we get the, the pronunciation of your yeah. name wrong, but um, we're going to go ahead and try to answer your question here. Okay. It says, any teachings on forgiveness? Okay. We do have some that we will probably post a, mm -hmm. um, a video on, it, but they're not really titled forgiveness, but we cover the forgiveness thing in the, in the video. Mm -hmm. But she says, I couldn't find any teachings on forgiveness, unforgiveness in your videos. I'm getting, I'm getting questions from my friends and family members about the subject, especially concerning forgiving the Gentiles for enslaving and mistreating Yah's people. Do you have any plans or has the Holy Spirit led you to teach on this subject anytime in the future? Okay. Well, like we've said before, we've already covered this <laughs> yeah. in many videos. It, it may not be titled as such, yeah. but we've covered this subject, as a matter of fact, many, many, many times. Yeah, we have. <clears throat> uh, basically, um, as it relates to the Gentiles, what, what you got to understand is um, um, the Scripture does talk about forgiving, okay? But if you look at the passages where it mainly talks about forgiving, especially in the in the book of Matthew, he's actually quoting the law. Yes. Okay. And in the passage where he's quoting the law, he actually said enemy, even it says for, um, forgive your enemies. He says, if you look up that word there, it says among you. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you um, look it up in Hebrew, it says, they say forgive your enemies, but actually that your enemies means among you the enemies among you uh, among your brethren among your brethren that's right among the hebrew israelites okay when you look uh, at the scripture too the law that it was quoting that's right i believe it's in numbers or leviticus one of those that's right it was actually quoting a law that actually said that's right your fellow brethren or your fellow israelites. israelite that's mm -hmm. right so now i want to i want to want you to think about something that i'm about to say here right okay we're so concerned about forgiving the Gentiles, right, for the things that they've done. But I want you to really think and keep, keep this in mind, okay? Now, you remember Yehoshua, okay, at the time right before, his, um, uh, before he was crucified, right? Peter and the apostles went to him, and they were, they were ready. He had swords. And, you know, Peter, he told Peter, he said, uh, uh, he told Peter to get two swords, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what were the two swords for if we're talking about forgiving, right? What were those two swords for? Okay. Now, Peter and them, when Yahushua came, they were all expecting him to do what? Restore the kingdom. But at that time, the kingdom was being ruled by who? Rome. Edomites. Mm -hmm. Edomites that's right. It's being ruled by Rome. Okay. And so they were like, is it time for us now to take the kingdom? Now, they weren't going to pray for everybody, right? They were going to get swords and then go out and slay a bunch of people and take their land back, basically. War. And then he told them, he says, it's not, it's not time for you. It's not uh, time for you to know. It's not for you to know the time that, uh, that, we're gonna, that the Most High has put in our power to take the kingdom back, basically, mm -hmm. is what he said to them. Mm -hmm. But that don't mean it ain't going to happen. So sometimes we get things a little mixed up and we think that, oh, let's pray for our enemies. Let's pray for our enemies. Let's pray for them. And we think that that scripture actually means pray for those that have done wickedness to us that are of, uh, of other nations. The examples okay? that I like to use yeah. are like David and Goliath. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when Goliath was doing his little dirt and it was time for David to slay him. Do you think the Most High spoke out of heaven to his mind and said, David, forgive Goliath and pray for him and fall to your knees and pray for him and love him? That's right. We get things so confused. When you look at the Israelites of old, okay, many times they would go to battle against various enemies. That's right. The Amalekites, That's the right. Philistines, 
the Canaanites, they when when they would go into battle with different people, mm -hmm. there was no exchange of love going on. That's right. We used scripture that was intended for um, us and our feelings towards each other, and we try to apply that across the board. Now, can you imagine during slavery days, and we put a segment of this in um, White It Out Five, The Curse of Generational Curses, where we talked about this. Do you really believe that back during slavery days that our people, uh, when they were being hunted down like dogs in the mm -hmm. woods, do you really believe that the Most High required that they um, stop in the woods, fall to their knees and pray for the people that were pursuing them with dogs and guns. Pray that the Most High would forgive them and, and even telling them, look, I love you, I forgive you. It sounds so psychotic. Right. I have to say this because our people have gotten this thing all wrong. We don't have the same kind of forgiveness. And I know it's just a question, so this is not aimed at you who asked the question. Right. I know that it's a question that you have, but a lot of people who have um, asked us this question in the past, and um, they followed up with commentary to make it seem as though we are wrong for saying that we sh this, that it's not talking about the Gentiles. The Most High is coming to destroy every nation who had a hand in the destruction of our people. Right. And and a lot of people like to use the scripture, well, vengeance is, the, the Most High said, vengeance is mine. Well, well, if you look in Psalms, he tells you how that vengeance is going to take place. Mm -hmm. You see, he tells That's you right. exactly how it's going to take place. But, you know, we are to try to live peaceably among all people. That's we right. are to do that. But we're not supposed to be sitting back concentrating on how much we're supposed to love and forgive and exonerate. We don't have the power to exonerate them because that's what forgiveness means. That's it right. means to exonerate someone for the evil deeds they've done against you. That's and we right. don't have that power to exonerate them. The Most High says that they got to pay. Every wicked person has to pay for the deeds done in their body. So if they're going to get forgiveness, it's going to have to come from the Most High. But as far as we go, we just have to obey the Most High's word, which is come out from among them and be ye separate. All of this concentration on whether or not we should be loving them and forgiving them for all the things that they've done and they continue. How can you forgive someone who hasn't even asked for it, who don't even care about whether we forgive them or not? Um, I remember one sister actually said that. Yeah. She said, how can you forgive somebody who ain't even asked you for it? Yeah. In other words, they don't care if we forgive them. <laughs> yeah. They can care less how we feel. They ain't coming to you and say, oh, could you please We're forgive so my ancestors for all that um, crazy stuff they did to your people? Mm -hmm. But let, let me say this to you. I, I want to get this point out real quickly here. Mm -hmm. Let me say this point here, okay? Um, first of all, the Most High, he, um, he had... Um, his uh, apostles put together the scriptures for a reason mm -hmm. and to give us certain information for a reason. And I think Revelations was a, a key book to give us understanding about prayer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you want to know if we should forgive them, right? Of something that their ancestors have done, right? But let's point out something here, okay? The actual victims, okay, of these heinous crimes that yes. you see are in heaven right now and they're praying. Mm -hmm. Now, if they're in the kingdom of Yah right now and they're praying before Yah right now, what are they saying to the Most High about these people that did this crime to them, that have killed them and have slain them? What are they praying? Because they're up in heaven. Now, this is a righteous prayer. Got to be righteous because they're in heaven praying it, right? And they had to be righteous people because they're in heaven. Okay? So let's see what they're saying. This is Revelations chapter 6. And I'm going to read here um, in verse, um, start at verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of Elohim and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Yahuwah, holy and true, Doest thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Yep. So you mean to tell me they are praying and constantly crying out before the Most High in heaven? How long before you get revenge on us for those people down there that's on the earth that's still alive? Their descendants that are still alive. How long? How long before you finally avenge us of them? Mm -hmm. 
And what did the most say? Did he tell them, no, that is an unrighteous prayer, unrighteous thing you're Get asking me here. away from my throne here. with that. He didn't say that. It <laughs> says, and white robes were given unto them. White robes? Wow, they were righteous. Mm. It said to every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet a little season. So he said, hey, y'all, just I understand. I understand how you feel. I'm going to get them. I'm going to get them. Just rest a little season, okay? Because your fellow servants and their brethren are going to be killed just like you were. That has to be fulfilled. Once that gets fulfilled, I'm going to go down there with me and my saints, thousands of saints and angels, and we're going to go down there and we're going to get that vengeance. So y'all just, you just wait. That time is coming. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so I think we get that confused. Go ahead. Guys up there right now, like, I know passions are high. <laughs> <laughs> that's a Django. He right? got that from Django. That's, that's the scene from Django. <laughs> I know passions are high. <laughs> that's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. but, but just wait a little, just while. Wait a little while. I got you covered. We got it. We got it covered, you mm -hmm. know. So. Hope that answered your question. I yeah. mean. As far as all this concentration on whether or not we should be forgiving and loving the Gentiles yeah. and all of that stuff, uh, we're not seeing go around creating bitter um, turmoil and chaos with people, but we're just saying do what the Word says. The Word says, come out from among them and be ye separate. Now, if a Gentile come to me and he says, uh, uh, brother, I am really sorry for what my people did and everything, I say, okay, all right, mm -hmm. okay. We're, we're not cold, well, you need, people. Right, and I tell them, well, good. You need to, now you need to get grafted in properly. Mm -hmm. And you need to do whatever you can do so that that judgment that's attached to all those murders that's attached to your bloodline don't come on you. Mm -hmm. So this is what you need to do. You need to detach. Now, that sound like hate? Did I would say that to him? No. Of course not. I'm trying yeah. to show him how he can make it out. I would tell him, that's why we got several videos for Gentiles telling them how they can make it out. Now, the sins that were done, those that's going to escape it, they better get grafted in. They better do everything right, like the scripture said do, so that that stuff don't come upon them. Because I'm with Yahuwah on this one. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever he got planned, he said, vengeance is mine. I say, well, shalom. And see, the thing is, <laughs> and we say these things, mostly we're talking to the Gentiles who are unrepentant. Because the scripture yeah. also said that even when he returns, they're going to still be trying to turn their weapons on him. That's you right. See? Don't think for one minute that his return is going to be unnoticed. They're That's going right. to know who they're dealing with. So we're, when we when we speak in, in general terms about Gentiles, we're coming from the Word because the Word has already told us how they're going to respond. Yeah. Now, it's only going to be a fraction. Yeah, i got to keep it real here because the Scripture says, If the righteous barely make it in, where do the sinner and the ungodly appear? So we already know that it's only going to be a fraction of Gentiles who can even deal with this, yeah. who can even accept the truth to the point where they can be properly grafted in. Yeah. The majority of them will um, accept a little bit of it, but they can only get so far. And this is the scary part for the Gentiles. Yeah. This is the scary part. Most of you will not make it because there is something in your heart that you have to deal with. Yeah. And that is going to be a very tough battle. I remember those cartoons where they used to have an angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other trying to get you to do one thing or the other there's a battle there's a war going on there's a war in your flesh and unfortunately most of you are going to lose that battle most yeah. of your most of you are going to succumb to um, the wickedness of your flesh and not the, the leading of the spirit that's right and it's, it's, it's really sad and unfortunate but it is what it is in my in my in my opinion of it all too, I don't see no angel and devil on one show, a devil on one shoulder, an angel on one shoulder. I actually see a devil on one shoulder and a devil on the other. And that's the kind of stuff that y'all are dealing with here, because y'all you got you got two devils on y'all shoulders. that's really just pushing all this wickedness and hatred and stuff. Some things are just blatant, in my opinion, that you can, you can see that it's unrighteous that's going on. Can no person in this world tell me that if there is not injustice, this, this, this injustice, injustice that's going on with our people yes. as far as um, the cops and officers and all this crazy stuff. And even average citizens, so, you, you have yeah. sometimes 
Gentiles or so-called white people marching through black neighborhoods with loaded weapons. Yeah. And you call the cops, they don't come and do nothing. But a black person can be walking somewhere with a, a fake weapon, and they come two seconds flat, you dead. Nigga. Be walking down the street with this with this pick in his hand and get shot. I you thought know? it was a gun. I thought it was a gun. I it don't even have nothing. Myself. I was offending myself. He he raised his hand up. I thought he was I thought he was throwing something at me, and I had to shoot him. It's you know? things like that. It's this. It's things like that yeah. that is going to make it very difficult for them. Yeah. It's like y'all said too about. It's like what you said, Danny, too about the. Um, it's not an angel on one side and both two devils on both shoulders. So it's like only someone with two devils on their shoulders could come to the conclusion that someone like Eric Gardner was a threat to him and strangle him to death. Yeah. And then people are rallying on the side of the cop, making it seem like the cop was right for doing. Did he that. even get? Did he even get charged for no. that? The cop? No. The guy that was filming, no, he got charged. He got charged, but he the cop arrested. that did the murder, oh no, he he's a you, good you, guy. You he see didn't what do I mean? Wrong. So so do I have any forgiveness for him? I tell you what, I'm gonna pray. The same prayer that these people in Revelations pray, because that's obvious to me that that's a righteous prayer. That's a righteous that's, prayer. That's the prayer I'm gonna pray for them. And the proof of the and those of is you, the fact that they're in heaven praying right. that prayer. Yeah. Now, those of you that want to repent and want to do right, then I'll tell you how to how to go in the that's right direction. Right. You know. But all of those that ain't repenting, then I, this is the prayer I'm praying for them. Right. All of those who want to continue with that cold heart of hatred towards our people. Yeah. Those of you who think, and see, we know that not all Gentiles thought it was okay that little Tamir Rice, the 12-year-old. Yeah, exactly. We know all Gentiles didn't think that that was um, justified. Right. But there is a huge number of them who did think. The majority of yes, them think that, that that was justified. That was a justified killing of that 12-year-old boy with a fake gun. We read the comments. We see what's on y'all's mind. And this is why we talked about... Um, Y'all have to understand, Gentiles, if we are kind of like this yeah. and, we, and we just choose to kind of keep our distance, you have to understand yeah. that coming out of centuries of hatred, murder, lies, and all of this other stuff that you can't expect just um, a, a couple of soft words and nice gestures to be enough for us to say, okay, I can trust you. It's that kind of thing that I've gotten a lot of our people killed because they have said, okay, since you said I'm sorry and you batted your eyes at me, I trust you. Let them in and you're dead. Yeah. And I know it hurts and it feels, um, you, some of you feel bad that we feel this way, mm -hmm. but put yourself in our shoes, okay? And it's very hard to do that. Jane Elliott, and I know we're gonna cut this off. Jane Elliott, she says, and she's a white woman, she's the one who does the brown eye, blue eye experiment. She asked the audience of white people, she said, how many of you would want to change places or take the place of a black person for just one day? Stand up. Not one person stood up. And she said, the fact that you didn't stand up proves that you know that things are not equal. Yeah. Now, Jane Elliott, that's one white woman that I can appreciate her stance on things. Yeah. And I can appreciate her honesty on things because she ain't trying to pretend with nothing. Yeah. You see? Yeah. You know, now a person like that, I wouldn't be praying for judgment on. I'll be praying that the most I will have mercy on her because Absolutely. of everything that she's trying to do yep. and help our cause. She put her you money see? where her mouth is. That's right. You see, she's lost a whole lot as a result of yes. standing up for black folks. Yes, she you has. know, she lost a whole lot. Her family been treated wrong and uh, been lost jobs and just all kinds of stuff have happened to her and her family mm -hmm. as a result of it. Yes. So, <clears throat> I hope he answered your question. Mm -hmm. Shalom. Shalom.